Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee, make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name. For thou never failest to help and govern those whom thou hast set upon the sure foundation of thy loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is a reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held up my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not, keep, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their lips their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord. As the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it, so I will do for my servants' sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 22. Please 
read the psalm with me responsibly by half verse. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. My wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. Our second lesson is a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans from Galatians chapter 3. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to, to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on a hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to see Jesus, 
They found the man for whom the demons had gone, sitting at the foot of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak to you in the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. I'm not sure about you, but our gospel lesson for today makes me feel incredibly uncomfortable. After all, it's a dramatic story that involves a possessed man, demons, and multiple pigs running full steam ahead into a lake. There is a lot to unpack in just 13 verses, and there are many elements that a person could reasonably find disturbing. For me, I find it hard to come to terms with demonic pigs running into the water. Leave it to a vegetarian to feel empathy for animals, but this scene as a whole is bizarre. Artists across the centuries have captured the strangeness of this series of events in their work. The style and focus varies, but the artwork typically depicts a distressed man with a tiny, terrifying demon coming out of him like a ghost and on its way into unsuspecting pigs jumping off a cliff nearby. The image is enough to make you feel wholeheartedly uncomfortable and wonder what exactly is going on here. It's an odd story to lead us into the season after Pentecost, right after our last two celebratory Sundays. But I assure you, there is still good news in this lesson when all is said and done. So, what is going on here? Our lesson begins with Jesus crossing the Sea of Galilee, but this crossing was a little different. For one, Jesus traveled to a city called Gerasa, which was a Gentile city that was culturally Greek at the time. Jesus was now in Gentile territory. With this in mind, it makes sense that there was not a large crowd greeting Jesus as he arrived in this new country. That being said, there was somebody who did come to meet Jesus. Our gospel lesson tells us there was a man in Gerasa who lived on the fringes of society. He wore no clothes and went around the city naked. He didn't have a conventional home, only the local graveyard where he could lay his head at night. All of this probably originated from the fact that this man was possessed by many demons. By this point in Luke's gospel, Jesus had already encountered demons. So when the man came before him, Jesus commanded the demons to come out. However, they did not give up without a fight. We hear that the extraction process was painful. Our translation of the account even uses the word torment here. In spite of all this suffering, we see a moment of compassion from Jesus. He asked the man what his name was, and the man responded by saying legion. This name represented not only the sheer number of demons possessing him, but also just how strong they were. 
like a Roman battalion. But this was not a problem for Jesus. He noticed there was a herd of pigs feeding on a hillside nearby and allowed the demons to leave the man and enter the animals. Jesus then commanded the pigs to go into the water. Context is key here. Jesus was Jewish. Within his culture, pigs were considered unclean animals. The books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy prohibited Jews from eating pork. From the perspective of a first century Jew, it would have been fitting for the sinful demons to enter the unclean animals. And the pigs running into the lake also hold significance. As I said before, Jesus had already encountered demons in this gospel, and the author of Luke took time to establish the pretense in those encounters to show that demons could only be destroyed by water. When the pigs rushed into the lake, the demons were destroyed. Sometimes it's hard for us modern readers to move beyond this bizarre scene. As Lutheran theologian Michael Rognes remarks, we do not experience demons quite like the people did in the Bible. But this doesn't mean we aren't familiar with them. Rognes observes, quote, all demons in the Bible have three things in common. One, they cause self-destructive behavior in the victim. Two, the victim feels trapped in the condition. And three, they separate the victim from normal living in the family circle, end quote. These three attributes describe a number of things in our modern society, such as addiction to alcohol, narcotics, pornography, shopping, and a number of other things. It could also describe the demons of indifference to the suffering of others, to poverty, to racism. And again, this list could go on and on. There are many demons in the world, and we know our own personal demons only too well. The point of this lesson is not about how many demons the man had, or the pigs running into the lake. The point of this lesson is that Jesus has the power to cast out demons, the power to set people free from the demonic at work in their lives. Jesus brings healing that overturns barriers, that abolishes taboos, and declares God's love and compassion for everyone as expressed in the inclusion of everyone. After the man was set free from his demons, he became clothed and sat resting at the feet of Jesus. He was finally at peace, no longer destined to roam about, only to return to the shadows of the grave at night. The man could go about as he pleased because he was free. He was healed from a life of torment. The power of Jesus shows us that demons do not have the final say in our lives, that redemption is possible through Jesus, who shows us the only way to live is the way of love. And there is a choice here. As we saw in the final verses of our lesson, there were some Gerasenes who were afraid of Jesus. Some saw the man being healed, and still they were so afraid, they asked Jesus to leave. As humans, we have free will. In this story, we see that we can either go to Jesus with our demons in plain sight, ready to be cast away so that we can be rid of them, or we can we can turn the other way out of fear because sometimes the terror we are already familiar with is more agreeable than the peace we can't yet imagine. So, in the end, 
after all is said and done, our gospel lesson might still leave us feeling uncomfortable. But perhaps this is a good thing. Maybe this discomfort, this knowing that there is a choice and call to change our lives will encourage us to choose Jesus instead of our demons. God's peace, which passes all understanding, is right there for us if we just allow the power and love of Jesus to transform and set us free. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto the divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially grace that they may both by their life and doctrine Set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people, to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace and to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be 
partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. By now you may be aware that last Thursday night, a shooter entered St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Bevista Hills, Alabama, killing three children of God. This morning, we join together with Episcopalians around the world as we offer our prayers. Eternal God of love, we know that you do not willingly inflict pain upon or grieve your children, and your dream for all is abundant life. We come to you now in sorrow and sadness at the death and violence inflicted on our siblings of St. Stephen's Church in Bevista Hills, Alabama. Receive the souls of those who have died. Grant them peace in your arms of love. Be with those who are injured and suffer, those who are grieving, and those who are frightened and dispirited. Help us as a nation to find ways to bring an end to the scourge of violence, which hurts your children and our human family. Give us the strength we need, the courage we must have, and the faith in you that will see us through. All this we pray and ask in the name of the Prince of Peace, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. The summer solstice is upon us. It is so bright and lovely outside. I have just a few announcements for you. I encourage you to look in the back of your bulletins with me. Uh, one of them being we have our blood drive, which is coming up on Sunday, June 26th. We also have our final adult formation for a new family opening the doors of the church, which is being led by a couple of leaders within our church. It's about Rachel Held Evans. The final meeting is today after the 10 o'clock service. And then we also have our Adopt a Coffee Hour, which is taking place over the course of the summer. Spots are going quickly, and we have a couple of transplants in the back of the church um, who are here setting up for the Sunday. Um, so be sure to check out Coffee Hour over and also to sign up for it as the summer continues. 
And then we also have our summer book club, which is taking place um, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. We're beginning and kicking it off with Jesus and John Wayne. And then we're going to be going into The Stranger and the Lifeboat. And then finally in August, Small Great Things. So lots of good and wonderful things. And I also want to say Happy Father's Day to who are here this morning. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator of the light and source of life, who has made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute 
and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God.
by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which gave up the sins. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Yeah, we have some bell ringing at the 8:30 service. <laughs> All right, yes. the neighbors will love it. <laughs> That's not good. Yeah. The community is probably mowing right now anyway. So, one person on the street started mowing, and now we're going to Is that your first experience with 8.30 and the right ones? Uh, no. Okay. It's been used to do it almost in a parcel. Oh, really? And then my parents got that service when they have that. They have a free service. Now they're without, but normally they have two services they can be on. So. My favorite. Yeah, eight o'clock is really a small, small group of people. But it's a special group of people. I miss that uh, going up and down and hugging everybody in the congregation at eight o'clock. So they're doing the fall and coming with Rice and Sunday. Thank you.